Life Urban Ministry, where faith and activism meet. Here's your host, Brother Leon Prophet to the streets and pastor to the people. What's going on, Truth and Life Urban Ministry family? What is going on? I am your pastor, Pastor Leon Prophet to the streets and pastor to you good people. So, hey, we get ready to go on in here, man. Let's go. Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for this time in the Word. We thank you, Father, Lord God, because the Word that you have given us this day is a strong Word. And we thank you, Father, Lord God, because we are in the place of God. And so, Father, being in the place of God, we know that we're going to have to deal with spirits and things that we have to overcome before we come into our Canaan land. And so, Father, we decree today that we will not be deceived in the name of Jesus, that we will overcome the spirit of deception, that we will overcome lies that the enemy is trying to tell us, and even the world, and even those who are close around us. But Lord, we come with the spirit of discerning. We come with the spirit of truth. We come with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit says, That he will take what is mine. Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. That he will take what is mine. And show it unto you. And so Father I thank you right now. That you're showing your people Canaan land. That you're showing your people blessing. That you're showing your people Lord God. Obedience. That you're showing them the open door. That you are showing them the open heaven. And so Father I thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for every good gift and every perfect gift that coming from the father of lights, that cometh down from the father of lights in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. I thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That every good gift, every perfect gift comes from you. And so, Father, I just lift up, Lord God, the marriages today. I lift up, Lord God, the relationships today that you will bless them. That you will bless the bonds. That you will bless, Lord God, the marriage bed. And that the people will not be moved with fear seeing celebrity couples break up. But, Lord God, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, Father, we thank you for this thank you for love, love for one another, that we would do right by one another, that we will value each other, that we would genuinely like and love each other, that there will be no schism in the house. I come against spirits of strife in the name of Jesus, and I loose a spirit of peace. I loose the spirit of love. I loose the spirit of joy. I lose the the spirit of temperance, patience. Because, Lord, you got to have patience in relationships. To go from one season to the next, there has to be patience. And so, Father, we thank you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we are in our series, In the Place of God. And so, last week, we were on Instagram Live. This week... I'm not going to lie, man. I want to go on Instagram live, but man, I need to start preparing better. And I need to get to a place because, man, I just don't want to be getting on my lives looking any old kind of way. Because the one thing about about me and about the one thing for this ministry, I just don't want to give you any old thing. And I've done that at times, but now it's like, yo, come on, man. Image is everything. So today... Due to the fact that, yo, I need to get a haircut and a shave and I ain't had time to do all of that. I'm going to give you this message and it's going to be online. I'm going to post it on Instagram. I'm going to post it on Facebook. But it's going to be strictly on the podcast. So you'll get the audio. So I want you to listen to it. I want you to listen to it and take heed to it. Because it's the second part of the Never Keeping uh, Secrets part in our series in the place of God so we gonna go on in here and like we always do 
we are going to read Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 to 20. And Joseph said unto them, fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And that is the scripture that we have been using because God is calling us to be deliverers. God is calling us to go into places, to go into regions, to go into our families, to go into our communities and be deliverers. And so this is the reason why we are in this series in the place of God. This is the reason why we're using the Bible, as well as the Apocrypha, as well as the book of Jasher, because I want you to get a complete view and perspective of the life of Joseph. I call the book of Jasher the Snyder Cut of the Bible. That's what I call it. And so, in the place of God, you're going to come across various spirits that will try to hinder your movement and even get you to self-sabotage what God wants to do. I'm going to read it again. In the place of God, you're going to come across various spirits that will try to hinder your movement and even get you to self-sabotage what God wants to do. So in the story of Joseph, we see lies prevailing, but no lie is truth. And we said that last week. I'm going to say it this week. So here's the first lie that was, you know, formed against Joseph. Let's kill him and, and say some beast has devoured him. The second lie, the Hebrew you brought into this house raped me because the one thing that happened is that his brothers conspired against him. They wanted to kill him, but they put him in a pit and they sold him into Egypt and they concocted a lie and sent it to his father and said, yo, an evil beast got him. Is this, is this your son's coat? Not even... Looking at the fact that that was their brother. They said, is this your son's coat? And that's how it starts. It always starts with hate. It always starts with envy. And the crazy thing about it is that you realize that once you get on that path, lies and deception, it'll keep you on a path. But the one thing people never realize is that it has a boomerang effect. And you never think that, okay... I ain't got to deal with this person no more. I ain't going to never see them again. This event in this moment will never happen. I will never have to face it again. But you're going to realize in this story right here, oh, you're going to see it. But today we're going to talk about overcoming the spirit of deception. And so let's go to 1 John and like we did last week. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, And that no lie is of the truth. So that's the one thing that you got to realize that no lie is of the truth. So I'm going to take it down here in order to overcome the spirit of deception. You have to realize that it first comes from the devil and everything that is negative. The goal is to keep you blind and to control your mind. So that is the purpose of deception. I'm going to read the last part. The goal is to keep you blind and to control your mind. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 1 to 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, It is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And I'm going to go back to that part, whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. So that's what happens. The enemy, he will come and blind your mind because you don't believe. And that's the one thing about unbelief is that unbelief is like a shroud. Unbelief that you're not divine. Unbelief that the promises of God are not working. Unbelief that you don't have faith. Unbelief that stuff is not going to work in your favor. It will blind your mind to the promises and the principles of God. 
A lot of times we become victims of deception because we are not aware. We will not listen and we will not take the time to read certain things and even the actions of people because we're so much in a rush. Some of us get deceived and we get into these crazy contracts because we don't read the fine print or we're not versed in how contract law is or how certain things are supposed to go. That is the reason why you have so many artists who have signed away their rights, who don't even own their own masters because they didn't take the time to read the contract or even get a lawyer to go over it with them to make sure that they're not being taken advantage of. And that's the one thing that we as people have to do. We got to begin to read the fine print. We got to begin to have discernment and awareness and begin to listen to what is being said. Because a lot of times, you know, if a person does a certain way or they do it a certain way, they talk real fast. A lot of times, yo, man, you need to listen. You need to listen. And a lot of times people that talk fast, that want to rush you into stuff, that want to pressure you into stuff. Now you need to back off and be like, no, 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 no. You operating too fast. Give me a little bit of time. So I can check this out. And that's the one thing that we as people have to get in the habit of doing. We have to get in the habit of of getting to a place where we will begin to see certain things and see certain people and see the red flags and not ignore the red flags. And this is the reason why certain things happen because we don't take the time to be aware And that's the one thing that you have to get in the habit of always being aware, always being conscious. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, am I there? Are you there? Are you present? Because if you're not present, then anything can come your way and you'll miss it. You got to look in the Bible that the children of Israel at times, they missed their time of visitation. Even us, we have missed our times of visitation. Because we always believe that, you know, that the windows of blessing, that the windows and the doors of God don't have a time uh, frame. Some of them do. Some of them do. The one thing that ain't got a time frame is your eternal salvation. That will always be. But there are certain things that you have to accomplish in certain seasons in order to go to certain places. And God will open up doors. God will open up windows of blessing for you. But some of those blessings, some of those doors have time periods. And you have to be the type of person who is aware of the time, who is aware of the season, who is aware of the door, who is aware of the blessing that is coming through. A lot of us, man, we we sleeping on stuff. And then we miss stuff because we're not aware. We leave money on tables because we're not aware. We lose certain things because we're not aware. And then we deceive ourselves because we are not aware. And this is the one thing that you have to have in your life to overcome the spirit of deception. You have to have awareness. Joseph didn't read the actions of his brothers in the beginning. But it wasn't until he was sent to go check on them. And even then it was like, man, and, 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 and you read it in the book of Jasher that he got lost. And the crazy thing about it is that in the book of Jasher, it says an angel came to him and showed him the way. But in Genesis, it says a certain man. And so, you know, looking at Joseph, when he was in the pit, he probably was thinking like, if I never ran into that dude, I wouldn't be in this mess right now. But a lot of times you got to begin to have discernment to know how to get out of certain things. You got to look at the deer. The deer at times, man, he will send stuff and he'd be like, no, I'm out. That's the guy knows truth. That's that's the one thing that that astonishes me with with animals because they feel certain things. He's like, "Uh uh-uh, no, uh -uh, this don't feel right. And a lot of times when you catch deers unaware, that's when they end up getting caught. You catch them unaware. Or you catch them at a certain season. And that's the one thing that I want you to see. You have to be aware or else you're going to get caught up. 
Joseph didn't read the actions of his brothers in the beginning. How many times have you said to yourself, I knew it. I knew something was off, but I ignored it. How many times have you said, I felt it in my gut. How many times have you ignored the red flags? I know I have. Hearing something. And I'm going to tell you this. You can't unhear what you just heard. Now you can take an and Jedi mind trick yourself, but you can't unhear what you just heard. You can't unsee certain actions, certain moves, certain things. But the one thing that I want you to see, the one thing that I, I don't want you to do is ignore the signs, ignore the signals, ignore the red flags. I don't want you doing none of that. Because a red flag is a red flag for a reason. And we should not ignore the red flags. I don't care how much faith you got. You cannot take and turn that red flag green. And those flags are red for a reason. You got to learn how to read the, the actions of people and begin to match actions with words. And a lot of times we don't. And then we wonder why we fall into certain things. And this is the reason why I say you can't fall in love with imagination. Because imagination will cause you to self uh, deceive, will cause you to deceive yourself. And then you're, you're thinking that they one way when they totally something different. And a lot of times people are not willing. Some people are not willing to live up to the potential that other people see. They have to see it for themselves. And if they're willing to live up to the potential, if they're willing to live up to to what you have seen or what other people have seen, then that's totally something different. But you can't expect a person to live up to a potential that you see that they do not recognize. And that's the God knows truth. The crazy thing about all of this is that we don't see it until the end But in this day and age, you have to have clarity and discernment to see it before it happens or get out of it before it takes you out. You got to have clarity. You got to have discernment to either, number one, avoid it altogether or you're in the midst of it and you see it's getting ready to close. Yo, you get out just in time. You got out just in time. Just just before the, the, the trap was about to snap, you got out. You got that Houdini anointing. But I'm going to tell you right now, man, yo, don't be doing that thinking that's a way of life for you. Because here's the one thing. God ain't called you to be an escape artist. God has called you to live by faith, to have discernment, to have clarity, so that you will not get in the trap and have to act as an escape artist. Do you hear what I'm saying? Deception at times claims to be something real, but it isn't. It's like a knockoff. It looks authentic, but it's fake. And the crazy thing about it is that there's knockoffs of everything. I never thought that they would actually make knockoff toys, but they make knockoff toys. They make knockoff software. They make knockoff bags. They make bootleg tapes. And a lot of us have bought those things thinking that they were authentic, come to find out that they are actually knockoffs. So whatever can be produced, there can there is always an authentic, but there's always a knockoff. And the crazy thing about it is that it's even like that when it comes to spiritual things. That there are knockoffs and there are things that are not authentic. There are authentic things and then there's the knockoff. There's there's the true anointing and that there's the false anointing. There's true apostles and there's false apostles. There's false prophets as well as true prophets, prophets of God. And that's the one thing that you got to realize. And a lot of times people make you believe that because I'm a certain title that there, there can never be no falsehood with that title. But I'm telling you right now that there can be falsehood in fivefold ministry. I don't care what the title is. There can be false people out here who have doctor degrees 
but they don't know jack about the field that they're in. They just have a degree, got a position, making the money, but they cheated and got, got a degree. Got a job off a of paper that wasn't even verified. And that is the reason why people fall into certain traps. Because other people don't take the time, like I said earlier, to check it out. You got to verify things at times. And that's the God knows truth. Joseph's brothers gave their father a false report and they were okay with it. How many times have you gotten a false apology? How many times have you gotten false promises and tears? Oh, I promise I never do it again. Oh, if you just give me another chance. Oh, I'm sorry. How many times are you going to be here and I'm sorry? I apologize. Can you forgive me? Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, how many times are we going to be that way with God? We have to ask ourselves, okay, am I just saying this out of habit? Do I mean it? And if I mean it, what am I going to actually have a change behavior? Because it's one thing to say sorry. It's another thing to change behavior. If you're honestly repentive, if you're honestly sorry, then you will begin to show the behavior that corresponds with that apology or with that sorrowful or with that, you know, broken spirit that leads you to a place of repentance. You are going to be the type of person that's going to change not only your mind, but also your actions. And when you have a change of heart, when you have a change of mind and a change of action, you have entered into repentance. All repentance is, is a change of mind. You can repent and you can believe the gospel, the good news that there is change. And that's the one thing that I want you to see. And so the one thing that I want you to understand is that when you are dealing with people, you're going to have to have discernment. I'm serious. Because you're going to have to see through crocodile tears. You're going to have to be able to weed through false apologies and know when people are running game, when people are scamming. Because I ain't going to tell you, man. Yo, the power of tears... If, if a person knows how to cry and they can give you a Viola Davis cry, they can give you a snot bubble cry, turning red, falling out, all types of stuff. If they can do that to get and deceive you, to get their way, to have their way with you, I'm going to tell you right now, man, yo, they got you because you fell for it. And a lot of people are caught up trying to fix people with addictions and they fall for the promises they fall for the lies this is the reason why we have to mean what we say and say what we mean and not be breaking promises to people because it it, when you break a promise it makes you lose confidence in that person how many times as fathers have we promised our kids something and we don't come through we lose cool points with our kids we lose confidence You know, the confidence is lost when we break promises to our children, even breaking promises to our spouse or our significant other. We end up losing it. And that's the one thing that you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose confidence when it comes to your kids or when it comes to your spouse or when it comes to your significant other. So you make sure that you follow through with that promise. And if it comes to a place where you can't follow through, then you be vocal and say, hey, look, I can't do what I promised, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to work hard at it. And I'm going to try to make it happen. Because least, you know, an effort in trying to make that promise come to pass is worth something than for you to take and lie about it and don't say anything at all. And a lot of times we lose out because we don't say anything. We put the promise out there and we don't even try to to do it or we don't even try to explain why it didn't happen. And some of us, you know, we have the ability to make it happen, but we want to lie and say, oh, no, we can't. That's because we lazy. That's because we have no integrity. But some of you who are honestly trying and you can't make that thing come home, you keep on trying until it happens. But you be vocal and you communicate and and people will give you grace in certain things. 
It's just the thing is that the grace runs out when it's constantly, oh, hey, I'm going to promise you this. I'm going to promise you that. And then you turn into the lion king. That's when people, you know, walk out the room and be like, yeah, I heard it before. So you got to make sure that you know, that you understand, and that you follow through. Hebrews 5 and 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Strong meat is life lessons. Strong meat is for the mature. Strong meat is for those who exercise their clarity, discernment, and hearing the voice of God. That's the one thing that I want you to realize is that that's what strong meat is. Strong meat belongs to them that are a full age, meaning basically you are mature. Those who by reason have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Meaning basically you are working your senses. You are being aware. You're, 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 you're seeing with your eyes. You have an understanding heart. You're hearing, you're listening with your ears. And like I said, it's for the mature. It, the strong meat is for those who exercise their clarity, discernment, and hearing the voice of God. That's what strong meat is. And that is the one thing that will definitely keep you from the spirit of deception. Genesis 37 verses 3 to 4. And Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. It's funny how favor brings out the hatred in some people. And that's the one thing that I want you to see, man, is that when the favor of God is on your life, the one thing that it will expose, it will expose your haters. It will expose those who are jealous and envious. Because here's the one thing. If God can favor me, God can favor you. Now, my favor might be different from your favor, but God favors us. And that's the one thing that people have to begin to see is that God favors us. And if God favors us, then that means his blessing is on us. It's just not on me and ain't working on you. But a lot of times people don't want to put the work in to get the favor of God. So let's go down here. Genesis 37 again, verses 15 to 36. And a certain man found him. That's what I was saying earlier. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him saying, what seeketh thou? And he said, I seek my brother. And this is Joseph when he was going to go seek out his brothers because his father has sent him there. So let's go back in here. And he said, I seek my brother and tell me, I pray thee where they fed, feed the flocks. And the man said, they are departed hence. For I heard them say, let's let us go to Dotham. And Joseph went after his brethren and they found them in Dotham. And when they saw him afar off, and even he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. There it is right there. And that's why I was saying you have to begin to discern people's actions. When they saw him afar off, Even before he came near to them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, this dreamer cometh, come now, therefore let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands. So they was, yo, we going to get him. And then we going to concoct the lie and say that some evil beast has devoured him. But here comes Reuben to the rescue and Reuben heard and and delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So he was saying, yo, just put him in the pit. And his plan was, I'm going to take him out of the pit and I'm going to bring him back home. I'm going to wait till these dudes, uh, you know, cool off. That was the plan. 
And it came to pass when Joseph would come, was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread and they lifted up their eyes and looked and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing uh, spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, what profit if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren was content. And they passed by the Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And so the one thing that I want you to realize, man, that people will sell you out for money. People will sell you. You got to look at the symbolism of silver. It's always silver that has betrayal with it. Jesus was sold out for 50 pieces of silver. Samson was betrayed for silver and gold. Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. So when people can sell you out for money, you got to realize, yo, not only is lies with them, but they're willing to deceive. They're willing to sell you out. They're willing to betray you. Because I'm going to tell you, man, the love, the love of money. When you love money more than anything, you be willing to do anything for it. The one thing that I will say is this. And Reverend Ike has said this. He said the lack of money is the root of all evil. But also the lust of money is the root of all evil. Because the crazy thing about it is that if you're do- willing to do anything to get it, then that thing is is, is controlling you. That thing is controlling you. Your appetite for money is controlling you, especially if you have no morals or integrity about it, especially where it comes from and who it comes from. And that's the God knows truth. So you have to be aware, even when it comes to certain people sowing into your business and sowing into your ministry, you have to ask yourself, is my integrity worth, worth that? There's just certain monies, yo, I'm not willing to take. And that's the God knows true. Now, you may call me a fool, but I'm like, nah, man. If it's attached with, with, with me having to do certain things or say certain things or not say certain things, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow myself to take corporate money to shut up about certain things, even government money to shut up about certain things. Because God has called me to cry aloud and spare not, show the house of Israel their sins. And I'm paraphrasing scripture. Show the USA their sins. Show the body of Christ their sins. Show the black church their sins. So if I sit up here and take money, then then I'm pretty much being bought. And right now, you you wouldn't believe the stuff that is out here, what people will do for money. Even when it comes to certain spiritual things, what they will do for money. And so you have to ask yourself, am I going to be a person of integrity? Because if you're willing to sacrifice your integrity for the sake of money, there's something wrong with that picture. Something's broken and it needs to get healed. So let's go back in here. And Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, and he returned to his brother and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goat. See, there it is. They appeared and killed something of their fathers, something that belonged to their fathers. They concocted a lie, kept the money, and now they're going to kill something of their fathers, Lie and say, yo, this is what happened to you, to your son. Let's go back in here. Kill the kid of the ghost and dip the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and brought it to their father and said, this have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. 
See, there it is. Is this your son's coat? And he knew it. And said, this is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. There it is. And I said this. Be aware of people who can lie to you and be okay with your brokenness. Their father to put put on sackcloth and ashes over his loins because he thought that his son was gone, thought that his son died. But them, they done sold him in Egypt, sold him to Midianites who turned and sold him in, into Egyptian bondage. And so the one thing that I want you to realize is that you have to realize that the spirit of deception works like that. That it will be blind to people's brokenness. It will be blind to people's authentic tears because the deception comes to manipulate. The deception comes to tell you lies, to manipulate you, to control your mind, to control your emotions. And that's how the spirit of deception works. He didn't know the truth. He wasn't there. And so the only thing he can do is count on the story and the testimony of his sons. Because they were there. And he sent Joseph to them. And it never came across his mind. Are they are, are they lying? That's why sometimes you got to go behind certain people. You got to check. And this is the reason why I say, yo... Just don't sit in church and not read your Bible. You check to see whether or not that man of God or that woman of God is actually saying something that's in the Bible. Because there's so many things that people say that are not in the Bible. So many things that people say that sound like like Bible but are not. Charity begins at home. Cleanliness is next to godliness. A whole lot of things. What I'm here to tell you this day is that you need to be aware. You need to be aware of what is in front of you. You need to be aware and check behind people. Even though people have good reputations, check behind them. Even though they may have certain titles, check behind them to make sure that there's not any inaccuracies, that they're not telling you lies or trying to deceive you. Because some of us feel as though, oh, because they're a certain thing, da 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 da, I ain't got to check behind them. You better get in the habit of checking behind people. Check behind your kids. Seriously, check behind them. Check up on their teachers. Check to make sure certain things. Because a lot of times things happen because of the blind spots that we miss or don't even look at. And that's the, and that's the God knows truth. So, let's go back in here. And Jacob rent his clothes and put on sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all the sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him, and the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. And that is how Joseph got into Egypt. And throughout Joseph's life, he walked being authentic. That's the one thing about Joseph. Throughout his life, he walked being authentic. Although lies were told about him and against him and his father, Joseph walked in authenticity. The way to overcome the spirit of deception is to live a life of discernment, number one. Number two, clarity. Number three, authenticity. I'm going to say it again. The way to overcome the spirit of deception is to live a life of number one, discernment. Number two, clarity. Number three, authenticity. There will always be knockoffs and bootlegs, whether natural or spiritual. That's the one thing that I want you to see is that there will always be knockoffs, whether they're natural or spiritual. What do you want? Seriously, you have to ask yourself, what do you want? Do you want the knockoff or do you want the authentic? Do you want yourself a fake bag that you done bought from farmer's market? Or do you want the real bag that you have to get from Christiana Mall? Do you want the fake stuff or do you want the knockoff? And so 
This is the reason why certain retailers say authorized sellers. Because a lot of times when they're not authorized sellers, you're not getting with it. The guarantee, number one, that it's authentic and also the warranty that comes with it at times. And so when you start making your purchases on certain things, make sure that you review it, but also buy from an authorized retailer. An authorized retailer. An authorized user is the type of person, yo, I can use this because I'm authorized to use it. I have the credentials. I have the warranty. I'm an authorized user. On certain computer programs, you are the authorized user. When you buy certain products, you buy them from authorized retailers. Like when I bought my equipment, I had to buy it from an authorized retailer. And I got not only with it a warranty, but I got a promise that it wasn't a knockoff. Because I bought it from the list of authorized retailers. What do you want? The knockoff or the authentic? There will always be knockoffs and bootlegs, whether natural or spiritual. And I talked about that earlier. There will always be false whatevers. There will always be bootleg whatevers. And even when it comes to anointing, yes, there is a bootleg anointing. It's called emotionalism. And people will hype you up and do all types of things and get you all revved up because they know how to read you. They know key words and it's easy to learn the language of Zion, to learn the language of church, but you got to check behind that thing. Matthew 24 verses four to five and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Jesus was the son of God, and at times he even referred to himself as the son of man. Jesus symbolizes son. Jesus symbolizes anointed one. Jesus symbolizes savior. Jesus symbolizes truth. And Jesus even said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. When you look at Jacob's sons, And what they did to their brother, you don't see any God-like or Christ-like, but they operated in deception, and that deception affected everybody. So, you know, you don't see God-like or Christ-like when you look at what Joseph's brothers did to him. You don't see that. You don't see Christ-like love. You don't see God-like love or God-like protection. His brothers were supposed to protect him. But instead, they conspired to kill him and they sold him. Sold him into slavery. Seriously. How many many of us have been the victims of people selling us into certain things? Selling us into addictions? Because they were the ones that got us high first. And then we had to believe God, go through rehab and all types of stuff to break that thing. Now granted, some of them didn't know Because they were in addiction. And some of them did know. Some of them wanted to see. So you got to watch out. Some people, man, yo, they, they, they set you up for bad relationships. And you know it. You know it. They knew it. They knew that person wasn't no good and then they set you up. Talking about, ooh, he'd be a good fit for you. Ooh, she the one for you. Knowing that, knowing how you are, knowing that that girl or that guy is not going to do you any type of good. But these are the people that supposed to, you know, call you. They say they love you. They call you know you supposed to be their brother sister. But here it up, here it is. They setting you up for a downfall. You have to ask yourself: Is that family? Is family supposed to be like that? Nah, it's not. Lies and deception are infectious because the one thing that I want you to realize is that when they did this to their brother, it affected their father. It affected the whole household because if you look at it, everybody was grieving. Even they went in 
on the high with the lie. Fake tears. Man, we didn't solve fake tears with Kyle Rittenhouse. The power of fake tears. That's the God knows truth. I even go and say the power of white fake tears. I'm telling you, man, yo, when a white person cries, the world stops. We as black people, we've been crying and moaning for years and, and stuff is not happening. The only time stuff happens with us is that a documentary has to happen with it. We got to get a film. But we've been crying for years and nothing. Until they see it on TV, Netflix, or any other docu-series that they may try to bring out. I'm like, why does it have to take all of that for us to even halfway be believed? They kill us twice. Lies and deception will have you thinking that you'll never see that person again or even revisit certain life events. But here's the one thing. They always come back. So I want to take you to the book of Jasher. They left Egypt, but their brother got left in Egypt because Joseph thought that he was a spy. So yeah, he kept Simeon. And so the one thing they end up returning and they told their father, hey, look, we got to go back because our brother is left there. He thought we were spies and he said he'll let him go. But Benjamin has to come. And so the father was like, "Nah, you know, you just said that Joseph got killed by evil beast. Now your brother's in jail and now you want to take Benjamin. Oh, hell no. But then the food ran out. And then the grandkids started crying. Oh, pop pop, I'm hungry. Pop pop, can you feed me? Pop pop, can you get me this? And as the patriarch of the house, of course he was going to do that. So he ended up giving, giving up Benjamin to them to take back to Egypt. And we're going to pick up. The book of Jasher, chapter 53, verses 1 to 10. And the sons of Jacob rose up and took Benjamin and the whole of the presents and they came with gifts and took the whole of the presents and they went and came to Egypt and they stood before Joseph and Joseph beheld his brother Benjamin with them and saluted them and these men came to Joseph's house and Joseph commanded the superintendent of his house to give to his brethren to eat and he did so unto them and at noontime Joseph sent for the men to come before him with Benjamin. And the men told the superintendent of Joseph's house concerning the silver that was returned with their sacks. And he said unto them, it will be well with you, fear not. And he brought their brother Simeon unto them. And Simeon said unto his brethren, brethren, the Lord of the Egyptians has acted very kindly unto me. He did not keep me bound as you saw with your eyes. For when you went out, From the city, he let me free and dealt kindly with me in his house. So he was saying, yo, remember when he put me in jail? He let me out of jail and I stayed in the house and he was real kind to me. He was good. And that was the nature of Joseph. He dealt authentically with his brethren, even though his brethren didn't do that with him. He was authentic with Simeon because he knew what the jail was like. He knew what it was to be in bondage. And he didn't want that for him. He could have very well kept him in chains. He could have very well even had him executed. And wait for his brothers to come back and execute them. But he did not. And this is what I mean when I say that the test comes when you are in prominence. The test comes when you're in places that are insignificant at times, that are very small, where people don't see you. And then it comes when you at your pinnacle, when you're in prominence, the test came, it came to them to test their integrity. And it also came to Joseph to test his character, to test his integrity as well. And so you see it right here. You see it right here. And Simeon said unto his brethren, the Lord of the Egyptians has acted very kindly unto me. 
He did not keep me bound as you saw with your eyes. For when you went out from the city, he let me free and dealt kindly with me in his house. And Judah took Benjamin by the hand and they came before Joseph and they bowed down to him to the ground. So there it is. And the men gave presents unto Joseph and they all sat before him. And Joseph said unto them, unto them it is well with you, it is well with your children, is it well with your aged father? And they said, it is well. And Judah took the record which Jacob has sent and gave it into the hand of Joseph. And Joseph read the letter and knew his father's writings and he wished to weep. And he went into an inner room and he wept a great weeping and he went out. And so here's the thing. It's like, you know, they don't even have discernment that this is their brother. But the crazy thing about all of this is that Joseph knows Joseph is going to keep his identity hidden. And the reason why is like, yo, you don't never cast your pearls before swine. And a lot of times, man, you got to keep yourself hidden from certain people and certain things because they don't need to know. They don't know what it took for you to get there. They don't know what it took for you to, to walk into certain things. And this is the reason why I say what I say. Because at the end of the day, it is what it is. You don't cast your pearls before swine. Sometimes you got to keep certain things hidden. But here it is. He's seeing a letter from his father. And it's like, man, I never thought that I would ever, you know, read anything from him. I never thought that I would ever see him again. I never thought that I would see these men again, my brothers again. I never thought that. But at the end of the day, the one thing that's happening is that, yo, you're seeing it. You're seeing it. Let's go back in here. And he lifted up his eyes and behold, his brother Benjamin. And he said, is this your brother of whom ye spoke unto me? And Benjamin approached Joseph and Joseph placed his hand upon his head and said unto him, may God be gracious unto thee, my son. When Joseph saw his brother, the son of his mother, he again wished to weep and he entered the chamber and he wept there and he washed his face and went out and refrained from weeping and said, prepare food. And so here it is. He done got his father's writing. He done saw his brothers and he's getting filled up. He's like, yo man, let me, let me take a hide myself because I don't want them to know because if he started crying in front of them, they'd be like, what is this? Who are you? Why you why you crying? And this is the reason why I say what I say. Don't cast your pearls before swine. The pearl right here was the display of the tears. The love. The longing for his house, for his father, for his brother. And the one thing, the symbolism of the pearls is that which is precious. And the heart of Joseph was precious. His authenticity was precious. His vulnerability was precious. And these are the things that you have to protect. You have to protect your authenticity. You have to protect your vulnerability. Because these are the things that are precious and these are the things that are priceless. You just can't display them to any old body. And a lot of times we wonder why we get into certain troubles because we're too open with people. People who we haven't tested. People who, you know, we haven't vetted. People who we just met. But yet you got that feeling like, ooh, they my soulmate. I feel like I can tell them anything. Nah, man, uh uh-uh, hold up. Yellow light, slow down. And so, the one thing about this is that it's coming full circle. Because a lot of times we believe that the lie will never bring us face to face with people we lied on, we lied against, we sinned against. 
We never think that things will come full circle. We never think that we will never have to face that event in time. But like I told you earlier, sometimes, man, lies and deceptions are like boomerang. They come back. And the one thing about about God and the one thing about his word, that which is hidden will be revealed. And that's the God knows truth. That is a principle that you must know, that you must believe and operate in. That which is hidden will be revealed. I'm going to bring it home with this. Galatians 6, verses 7 to 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life. And here's the one thing. Be not deceived. What is God? God is divine. God is divinity. Be not deceived. Divinity is not mocked. You can't sit up here and mock divinity with lies and deception. Lies cannot live with divine. Lies cannot function in divine. Be not deceived. Divinity is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he for he that soweth to his flesh, he that sows deception, he that sows lies, shall of the flesh reap corruption. So if you sow in lies, you're going to reap lies in your flesh. The only thing that's good about reaping in the flesh is when you start working out. Because the one thing about working out and having a good diet, these are the things that if you sow it, you're going to reap it. You're going to reap health. You're going to reap vitality. The one thing about health and the one thing about working out is that it redeems the time. And if you look at some of these people who are bodybuilders, yo, they don't even look like their age. I did an interview, man, with Dorothy Tiller. Slaughter Cat. You wouldn't believe that she's 55 years old. She looked like she's 30 something. Seriously. She looked like she she's in her in her in her late 30s, early 40s. And it's a whole lot of women out here, man, who don't even look their age because they working out. They eating right. They sleeping right. That's the only thing of the flesh that you can reap that won't reap corruption. Now, granted. You got to make sure that you you stay from vanity. But at the end of the day, when you start sowing lies, you're going to reap that lie. When you start sowing deception, you're going to be reaping deception. But be not deceived. Divinity is not mocked. You're not going to mock that which is divine with lies and deception. Because divinity is not going to go for it. And number one, the lie can't stand up to divinity. Can't stand. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life. So you got to make sure that you are sowing authenticity to reap authenticity, to reap authentic moments. And one thing that I'm going to tell you is this. You may not reap where you have sown in certain places, but you will reap what you sow. You may have sown and given unto people who didn't give a, a damn about you. And then you didn't get no return from that person. But you will get a return. And that's the one thing that I love about God is that our labor is not in vain. Our seed is not in vain. And I want to go back in here. Like I said, you can't mock the divine. You just can't let a lie try to live inside that which is divine. Or vice versa. The lie can't live live in, in the divine vessel. There are certain vessels for certain people. I'm going to give you an illustration. 
You remember that show Supernatural? You remember how when Lucifer came on the scene in that series, how he needed a certain vessel. And that vessel was Sam Winchester. That was his true vessel. But every other vessel he wore out because they couldn't, the vessel could not stand up against the fact of what he was. What he truly was. And that's the one thing that I want you to realize is that lies will wear you out. Lies come from the father of lies. Lies are for the devil. And that's the God knows truth. Because it says, Jesus said that he was a liar in the beginning, that he is the father of lies. And like I read to you earlier, that no lie is truth. Truth and divinity go hand in hand. Lies cannot go with divinity. And the one thing that I want you to realize is that we got stop deceiving ourselves. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And you have to realize that divinity is on the inside of you. Divinity is on the inside of you. So give that which, which is authentic to divinity. Give that which is true to divinity. Be your authentic self. Be your divine self. Be that person who is willing to be vulnerable. Be that person who is willing to be authentic. Because that is how you overcome the spirit of deception. Being authentic. Being discerning. Making sure you are aware. This is how you overcome the spirit of deception. And so you got to make sure that you are aware. A lot of people fall off because they're not aware. And a lot of people fall into this whole thing of deceiving people, not realizing that you're going to end up facing it again, facing them again, facing that moment again. You think you get away, but you really don't. And like my teacher said, pay me now, pay me later, but you're going to pay me. And that's the one thing, like I said last week, and I'm going to say it again and I'm going to end it. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to God, but you can't lie to consequence. So I'm telling you this day, be a person that walks in authenticity so that you can overcome the spirit of deception. Peace. When you have truth and life, you have freedom. Follow Truth and Life Urban Ministry on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Like, share, and subscribe to Truth and Life Urban Ministry. 